In this video, we're going to talk about HTHS viscosity, what it is and what the impacts are. So if you remember from our discussion of basic engine oil viscosities, there's a relationship between oil viscosity and temperature. And while it's not linear, we'll kind of represent it with straight lines. So we've got low temperatures and high temperatures, and obviously viscosity decreases as you increase temperature. Okay, so just like honey gets thin when you heat it up, same thing with oil. So this is what a 0W monograde oil might look like. And a 20 weight monograde oil will kind of have follow the same line but at a higher viscosity. Now, when we talk about multigrade oils, we mean something that looks like a 0W at low temperatures and looks like a 20 weight at high temperatures and therefore we would call it a 0W20, right? So that is a multigrade oil. The thing about this picture is though that the low, quote unquote, low and high temperatures are 40 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. That's just industry standard for how we take viscosity measurements. But realistically, in the engine, there are so many components where the oil temperature is going to exceed 100 degrees Celsius. And so this isn't a realistic picture. So what we want is some kind of measurement for a temperature that vastly exceeds 100 degrees Celsius. So we're actually trying to get a feel for what is the viscosity behavior at temperatures of, you know, 150 to 200 degrees Celsius. That's where HTHS comes in. And so the high temperature part of HTHS is, is we're going to make a measurement at 150 degrees Celsius. So that's going to become our standard. And we're also going to apply a high shear force because that's more realistic, right? That's more representative of what happens in the cylinder liner, what happens in the valve train, um, all that kind of all that kind of stuff. What happens in you know uh, when when gears intermesh? So that's what HTHS is trying to represent. Now, let's go back to our discussion on VI improvers. We said that you know if you took a, a standard mineral base oil, maybe it would get you a 10W monograde, but by using a synthetic base oil with a higher VI, right, with the same you know cold temperature viscosity you could get a 10W40 because it would be thicker at higher temperatures. If we wanted something above a 10W40, we might need to add VI improvers to get to a 10W60. And so that kind of um, extra contribution is all made up by the viscosity index improvers. Similarly, we could actually take that really kind of um, crappy mineral base oil and add a lot of VI improvers to get us to a 10W60. There's all kinds of reasons we don't want to do that. So VI improvers, um, over time, they shear down, right? So when they go through high shear areas, they break apart. And so slowly your 10W60 will start to look like a 10W. But even more, or in some ways, um, just as importantly as that, they also contribute to engine deposits and things like that. So what are we talking about when we talk about high temperature, high shear situations? So there is another situation in which the contribution from VI improvers reduces, and that is in high shear scenarios. So if we have a, a big VI polymer, what happens is as it passes through um, kind of a thin lubricating film at, at high shears, so imagine this is between two gear teeth, what happens is it sort of elongates. It gets, it gets okay, this is not a technical term, but it gets squished and it gets stretched. And when it forms this kind of shape, it has a diminishing contribution to the overall viscosity, right? Now, if it hasn't sheared down, it's going to come safely back out the outside. And so in the, the bulk oil viscosity, it is still going to make a contribution, but it's not going to make a contribution to the oil viscosity in high shear regions. All right, why is that important? Well, if you consider all the different engine components, Think about all the situations in which high temperature, high shear might be applicable, right? It's the oil pumps, it's, you know, the main gear, it's the valve train, it's the piston rings. Now, these are all areas, right, in which the oil is going to be hot, you know, anywhere up to 150 or 200 degrees Celsius, and it's going to be experiencing high shear forces because of the speeds. 
So that's where it's important. And that is where high temperature, high shear viscosity becomes important because this viscosity is where we lose energy and where it contributes to um, fuel efficiency, right? So if we have a, I'll give you a standard kind of diesel engine oils have a minimum HTHS viscosity of three and a half centipoise. If we were able to reduce that to three centipoise, well, we would get a lot of fuel efficiency back, right? Because all of these heavily loaded components are having to act against a lower viscosity. Now that comes at a cost, right? So if we're going to lower the, the oil viscosity in these regions, then aren't we sacrificing wear protection? Because a higher viscosity is what helps to protect our components. And so in order to have a low HTHS oil, we need to boost the additive package because it needs to do a lot of work and we need to have high quality base oils right we need to go to something with a lower traction coefficient for example that can demonstrate a lower viscosity under high shear conditions but continue to afford wear protection to our engine components right so that's that's really the discussion around hths at the moment is um a lot of the lubricant specifications are starting to demand lower HTHS viscosities so that we can meet fuel economy standards. However, that comes at the cost of wear protection, so we need to do some additional things on the formulation side to ensure that we continue to protect our engine. All right, I know that was pretty quick, but this is just a basic primer, so if you've got questions or comments, please leave them below. As usual, this has been Lubrication Explained.